Hello everybody. Just getting the camera set up. <laughs> Welcome. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm in the process of packing a kiln and so I'm looking around to see what pots I've got and what we need to put in. So I, I found here I have some mugs so I'm going to glaze them in a celadon glaze and I thought we'd just just move the camera down so you can see watch me do that. Nothing really very complicated about it but um, so yes well when you've had some biscuit bisqueware hanging around on a shelf in the pottery after a while incidentally it's always best if you've got bisqueware leave it upside down well what did I do I didn't leave it upside down I left it the right way up so of course I look in there and I'm thinking oh my goodness me there's a bit of dust in there so I need to dust these out of course now is the time when you're doing this to cast your eye over them if there are any sometimes with the blade of a knife it's good just to go over go over them with the blade of a knife and just get off any crappy pretty pieces that have clay that's stuck there and Beautiful evening, it's about six o'clock, it's a lovely day, sunny all day. And great day for drying pots. Nearly done. Of course, enemy, the uh, number one enemy of glaze is dust, isn't it? So, now you don't need to soak them in water, as some people want to do, or I've heard. They wash their bisque wear off before they glaze it. It really is not necessary for that. That's an awful waste of time. You've then got to wait for them to get dry again, and, and it isn't necessary. So, as I say, the best thing to do is store them upside down all right because if you leave them in the pottery they will get dusty inevitably but if you leave them upside down at least you lessen some of that dust getting into the okay let's just focus down here on the on my glaze bucket down there this is a cellar cellar and glaze um, two percent red iron oxide in here. So what we're going to do is um, I've got my jug here and this is the lid of the glaze bucket so I'll put my jug down on top of that in between now I'll just explain to you about these and how they're glazed these are only glazed on the inside and just over the rim and the handle is dipped all right I'll show you they're so going to take some glaze in here pour into there put that over there on the lid all right now wind up your wrist like this then you can tip out and unwind your wrist, you see. Now I'm going to go down into the bucket. Just put over the rim like I want and over the handle. And see what I've done there? Inside. Ooh, what's that? 
a bit of a mixed glaze there. Um, just over the rim, and then I do the handle so the handle is ni nicer to hold. Okay. So, next one. Okay, now you pull, I pull the glaze in. Okay, now I'm going to wind my wrist up, you see? You see that? Now tipping, tipping out, and then unwinding my wrist. See, it gets it all covered. Sounds like the geese are being fed up the road. Na, 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 na. Now these where they're not where they're not covered in glaze will be sprayed with with that wood ash. Now, it's worth giving your glaze a stir, and I sort of try and make a habit of, of doing this, giving it a stir after every few pots that I glaze. Now, when I dip these, I try to get it straight as much as I can, all right? If it's a little bit out, I don't worry about it. If it's severely out, I may touch it up a bit. Glazing is, is not an easy thing, is it? It's, uh... But it takes practice, that's the secret, isn't it? Like all these things I, I try and teach you, it's practice, practice, practice. It makes perfect. Oops, I think I was clumsy there, look what I did, see? Pull it down the edge of the pot, tap, tap, tap. Well, accidents do happen. And that's why you always have, when you're glazing, a sponge with some water. So you can deal with that little mistake that you've made. So it helps to have a sponge that's got quite a nice sharp, like clean edge to it, so you can, if you need to, do a little last minute cleaning off. Dee 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 dee. 
This is a high temperature cellar and glaze, it's good for cone 10 and that is of course in reduction. And there they are. Those guys are done, but there's still one more thing I've got to do. So just bear with me. Um, bear with me for two jiffies while I I've got a pot inside. I want to dip in um, in raw glaze or in a pot that's going to be once fired. I just want to just get that pot. Talk to you about it. La 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 la. Be da da be. Okay, so we've done the we've done the the mugs. Um This is a, a vase or which I've done this sprigging decoration on which is adding a small ball of clay and then smearing it you see. And very often you see this done in a straight line down the side of a pot. In fact I've got that pot I did, that one I showed you that I was doing, that one that I copied out of my grandfather's book, if you remember. Well this is the same, exactly the same, but this is sort of like random, random, random sprigging, um, go, going in all, in all directions. Anyway, this is now at a stage where I want to dip it in this in this glaze. So that's what I'm going to do. So hang on a minute. Let's just get the camera pointing in the right direction. La la la. Somewhere down there. Somewhere down there in yonder bucket. Okay, there it is. So. Oops. Still okay up there. So let me just get Yeah, what I'm gonna have to do is just bear with me a moment, I've gotta go inside and get my jug, I forgot to bring it. This is that glaze that's, well I call it crocodile because it looks like crocodile skin. But it's um, red clay and wood ash 50-50. Depending on the wood ash you'll get different interesting effects. So let's just get that jug back. La, la, la. Right. Now this, this being a larger piece, um, will present I'm thinking if I dip that in there, um, I'm wondering if the glaze is going to run over the surface of the, uh, it's going to overflow, you know what I mean? When I, when I push that down in there, that glaze is going to come up, isn't it? And it's going to, it's going to overflow the bucket. 
So there's something to think about. So I'm going to take some of that out. I've got a couple of these, so what I'm going to do, because I don't want to make I don't want to make a horrible mess of it. Apart from which I'd be I'd be losing all that glaze, wouldn't I? It'd be all flowing on the floor. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave that there, and I'll put I'll put that back in in the bucket in a minute. So, um, so what's happening? Are we there? Yes, I think we are. Um, let's see now. Blazing this one. So, what I'm going to do is, by the way, uh, raw pots don't generally have the problem of dust as much as bisque pots, because usually raw pots have not been hanging around long enough to, um, to take on any dust as such. Plus, the surface of the pot is not dusty at this stage, because it's still, as you can see, dark. Uh, indicating that there's still some moisture in the pot, although we can see some drying occurring here on the top. Okay, doke. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to have to pour in, all right, swill it around, pour it out, and then dip the whole thing down. I hope I can get my hand down there with it. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll take it out, put it on the banding wheel over there. Okay, let's go. So, I'm going to take some glaze here, pour it inside, swirl it around. Now I'm going to pour it out, okay, like that. And now straight down, holding it there, straight down, yep. Give it a little shake off, any excess to run off, and put him over here on the banding wheel. As I mentioned. Okay, let's just swing, swing this camera over here, so you can you can see. All right, there you are, you see the, the pot there. I'm just letting my hand go like this so I can run some drops off the... Let the, the droplets run down to the end of your fingertips and then you can trail them over where you where you touched it. Okay, good. Right, now I can put that glaze back in that I took out. So, there we are, folks. We did it. I'm now going to rinse off my hands here with a sponge. I can smell, I can smell the wood ash. I can still, I can smell it in the glaze, you know. 
It's a distinctive smell, isn't it, wood ash? Of course, when you have a pot like that and you dip it in <clears throat> into glaze, you are rehumidifying, wetting the clay again. So the pot can become um, soft again. Well, I think this decoration could work quite well on any number of different pots. So certainly I can imagine that working not nicely on a Temaku, uh, maybe a Celadon. Anyway, there we go folks. So we've been practicing, doing a bit of glazing. Hope that's been of help to somebody. Okay, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. Oh yes, <laughs> I've always got to plug my own website these days. Somebody said, you should always plug your own website. So <laughs> please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. Okay, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. La la la.